Hello, and welcome to this lecture on laser propulsion. My name is Stefan Scharing, and in this video, I will give you a short introduction into a field of space propulsion, where one day high-power lasers might become a game-changing technological option. After watching this video, you will have another five videos dealing with lasers and the various possibilities how to implement them in future space propulsion devices. The lecture is part of the lecture series on unconventional space propulsion of the Institute of Space Systems at the University of Stuttgart, Germany. In this winter, 2021, we will have this lecture online, of course. And I do hope that you are all healthy and safe, and your family and friends do so as well. At the lower left of this chart, you can see the logo of the German Aerospace Center DLR. So actually, this talk will be a guest lecture. In 2013, I have graduated from university at the Institute of Space Systems with my PhD thesis on laser propulsion, which treated an experimental study on laser rockets using a high-power laser. I have carried out this work at DLR Institute of Technical Physics. So first of all, when we talk about high-power lasers, I would like to introduce our institute to you. The DLR Institute of Technical Physics in Stuttgart is one of the great multitude of DLR institutes spread over 30 different sites throughout Germany. At our institute, we undertake research and development concerning laser systems for aeronautics, space, security and defense. The institute is led by Professor Dr. Thomas de Causey, who as well as Professor at the Faculty of Aerospace Engineering and Geodesy at the University of Stuttgart. In the field of aeronautics, scientists and engineers examine whether laser-based optical sensor systems are able to support or even replace conventional air data systems and might even perform better regarding reliability and precision. The work also includes development and evaluation of aeronautic compatible laser and detector systems for flight applications based on temperature and pressure sensitive absorption spectroscopy, as well as laser-based Doppler anometry. Regarding space, we are working at our institute on a laser-based tracking method to determine the precise location of orbiting objects, in particular space debris. Based on the position data, it's possible to calculate precise orbits of space debris that in turn enable efficient avoidance maneuvers. Moreover, as a long-term solution for the space debris problem, possible concepts for laser-based removal of space debris are analyzed and developed. In the field of security applications, the laser-based detection of chemical, biological, and explosive hazardous substances is one of the main topics of the Institute of Technical Physics. Using suitable laser irradiation and the recording of the backscattered spectrum, suspicious unknown substances can be detected and identified early and in a safe manner. Thus, appropriate countermeasures can be taken promptly, reducing the threats of the to the population, rescue teams and the environment. Finally, the research on long-range laser effectors covers power scaling of high-brightness laser designs, the propagation of high-power laser radiation in the atmosphere, including compensation for optical interference, the optical tracking of fast-moving objects, and also affecting the effects of laser on the target. Possible applications include the power supply of unmanned aerial vehicles, or satellites in terms of laser power beaming or laser-based air defense. Unlike in a live lecture at university, I would now like to encourage you to have your smartphone ready. Every now and then you will see a QR code here. You are invited to scan and access a website or a scientific paper related to the content presented in this lecture. As always on the internet here, the legal disclaimer that I do not take any warranty for the linked content. However, this content is pretty safe. Here you can access the website of our institute, learn more about our research and, in case you are interested, find open positions, maybe suitable for your own upcoming master thesis. 
When you think about space, lasers and propulsion, you might have associations of rather science fiction, then considering realistic technology. Perhaps you think about strange things like an interstellar photon rocket, a laser space elevator, or a lightsaber, or a giant death ray. But keep in mind that powerful lasers are already part of our daily life, for example in eye surgery or laser cutting of metals at the industry. Moreover, research and technology continuously advance and have shown, for example, laser power being to drones or first steps in photon propulsion. In sum, what you see here is a mix of conventional, advanced, unconventional and visionary technology, which is somehow typical for a lecture on unconventional space propulsion. But why is it worth to spend time with unconventional concepts? Because you definitely need it in your professional life as an engineer to dare the unconventional. I will show you why. Let us review unconventional thoughts of the past with a background of current technology. In 1714, Sir Isaac Newton stated that it will be unthinkable to have a precision better than three seconds for a clock aboard a ship. In 1821, a father angrily told his 12-year-old son, you got nothing in mind than collecting bugs, chasing, catching rats. You will do nothing than shame yourself and your family. Meanwhile, we know that Darwin's theories have constituted, constituted rather fame than shame. In 1970, the German physician Rudolf Virchow stated that bacteria would be nothing but wool gathering. And in 1890, Emile Duboremont declared about photography that almost nothing can be expected concerning taking photos in natural colors. Not only for the near future, but for theoretical reasons, never. At the end of the uh, next to last century, Lord Calvin was convinced that in the future those rays of Mr. Röntgen would turn out to be fraud. And Charles Dwell from the US Patent Office concluded the century with the final remark that all that can be invented has already been invented. So the next quotation originates directly from here, Stuttgart, from the famous Gottlieb Daimler. The worldwide demand for motor vehicles will not exceed 1 million, already due to the lack of available chauffeurs. Instead, the German Emperor Wilhelm II honestly believed in those days that horses will outlive all times. Automobiles are just a temporary phenomenon. And considering aeroplanes, Marshal Ferdinand Fock discarded them to be worthless for the military. Nuclear power technology, entirely out of reach forever, if we asked Albert Einstein in the 1930s. Computers, not conceivable to become a business case, as of Thomas Watson from IBM in the 1940s. And similar about laptops, when we asked Steve Jobs in the 1980s. On the other hand, one can be over-optimistic about new technology as well. And over-pessimistic about conventional technology. So what can we summarize about visionary thoughts and future technology? People who have a vision should turn to a doctor. This is a quote from our former German Chancellor more than 40 years ago. And this is what I've heard from a scientist when telling him about my upcoming thesis on laser propulsion. But as you have seen, sometimes the very unconventional is separated from daily life only by time. Years, decades, but maybe also centuries. That's why it's worth taking a look at unconventional propulsion concepts. If you like this, at the end of video number six, you'll find some practical thoughts for your working life as an engineer that might help to think unconventionally from time to time for your mission to advance space technology. Having said this, what is laser propulsion? Here are the definitions. A laser thruster is a thruster in which laser energy contributes substantially and indispensably to the kinetic energy. In addition to that, there's a more general definition, a light craft. 
A light craft is a thruster based on electromagnetic radiation, be it laser or microwave. Such a laser thruster can simply be based on recoil from photons, but we can also have, for example, some thermal effects that are induced by laser radiation. The term light craft can as well be used with a more specific meaning. In the narrow sense, a light craft denotes a thruster based on detonations which are induced by a remote laser source. Still, this looks futuristic. But right now, can you construct a light craft in the broader sense at home? The answer is you can, if you have a laser pointer at hand. So, if you have it at hand, simply turn it on and point it to something that you want to move. Please do not point to a mirror, but to something more diffusely reflecting or absorbing object, but please no mirror. Point to your target and watch. Does it move? What do you think? Do you induce thrust to your home spacecraft? If so, how much? Just figure out a rough order of magnitude. With a regular laser pointer, the thrust here is about 5 piconewton. It's a bit below sticking fraction, of course, and so you see nothing moves. But in fact, you have thrust 5 nanonewton per watt of laser power. So what can you do to have more thrust? Take more laser power. Think of megawatts, not of milliwatts. Moreover, once you focus laser radiation in space or as a short laser pulse in time, you might observe some thermal material reaction. Then it's going to be really interesting. Here I will show you a demonstration experiment from the European Study Clean Space in which our group at DL Institute of Technical Physics participated. In this video, you see a laser mill wheel, which is located in a vacuum chamber. On this wheel, there are many aluminum plates and we have taken a laser with moderate average power of 33 watts to irradiate one of those plates from outside. The laser emits very short laser pulses of three nanoseconds duration, which yields a very, very high intensity of 94 megawatts during this short irradiation time. The beam is focused onto a small spot of three millimeter diameter on the aluminum surface which rapidly heats and finally we have vaporization here from the surface. This gives a pretty large recoil and the wheel moves faster and faster and faster. Momentum coupling here is more than a thousand times larger than with pure photon pressure. So pretty nice, but what could all this be good for? Before we go into the technical details, let me line out several tests that one day might be realized using laser propulsion. And I think it's important to point to the tasks first, before wondering what could work and where the obstacles are and so on. In this regard, Professor Röser, the former head of the Institute of Space Systems and supervisor of my PhD thesis, used to point to a quote from Antoine de Saint-Exupéry. If you want to build a ship, don't drum up the man to get a board, divide the work and give orders and so on. Instead, teach them to yearn for the vast and endless sea. In this terms, what could be attractive for using high power lasers in space flight? Here are four visionary tasks. Upload propulsion power in the order of megawatts and more. Reduce propellant consumption down to less than 1% as seen from now. Precise satellite positioning at the level of nanometers or micrometers. Detect and remove space debris in the science range of decimeters down to centimeters. We will treat these four topics in the videos three to six after you have learned some fundamentals about lasers in the subsequent video number two. The different types of laser propulsion concepts are related to different phenomena of laser matter interaction. The occurrence of those phenomena highly depends on the laser parameters, in particular the amount of laser intensity. 
In power beaming propulsion, one is simply absorption or reflection of laser radiation, which can then be used for laser photon propulsion. But as well, one might have uh, energy conversion after photon absorption, which is the case for laser photovoltaic propulsion. At higher laser intensities, heating and ionization of propellant material can occur. And now we enter the field of laser thermal propulsion. There are different types of laser thermal propulsion. When laser radiation leads to detonation and combustion, we can talk about technology for laser launchers, like for example the laser light craft. When material ablation occurs at laser irradiation, we come to the field of laser ablative propulsion. And finally, this phenomenon opens up a possibility to push space debris, which is a very interesting kind of space propulsion. In laser propulsion, there's one figure of merit that you will encounter everywhere, and you have already seen in the previous slides, the momentum coupling coefficient, C index M, represents the ratio of thrust to average laser power, or, which is equivalent, when you look at laser pulses, the ratio of imparted momentum to laser pulse energy. Note that we talk about optical laser power and optical laser pulse energy, respectively. If instead we set the thrust in relation to the electrical power required for the laser, then we come to the system's momentum coupling coefficient, which is basically the same as the thrust to power ratio in electric propulsion. In this regard, for the most laser types, laser propulsion is a special type of electric propulsion. At the end of this introduction video, let's have a brief look at history once again. As usual, laser propulsion started off with concepts for photon rockets, ground-based laser propulsion, removal of space debris, and many more. On the experimental side, there have been free flights with several different laser vehicles in the laboratory, but as well outside. And you will get more insights on this story of research and development in the next videos. But first, Take a look at video number two on laser fundamentals, which will help you to understand how all this works. So take a short break, get a coffee, and see you again in the next video.